Okay, great. Uh, takes pressure on me. Thank you. And I'm trying to go ahead and share the screen at this point. So it, that, yeah, is anyone on there? Um, oh, no, that's one person. Yeah, one that's person. Yeah. Okay. So, do I need to share a screen? Let's share it. So, when they pop in, it's there. And then I pop select this one, right? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Okay, great. Uh, so, you don't have to have the site password protected. I do. So, go ahead and my password. I had it logged on before I went to the register. Okay. Coming into this site. Okay, this is what you get when you log in every time you log into this site. So if you can't see it where you are, I'm going to read it. Creating a session on this site does not give your group special rights to a court. So Playtime Scheduler is not a court reservation system. This site is a tool for meeting other players and arranging games. Failure to follow a venue sport sharing and rotation rules may result in players or venues being removed from the site. Thank you. Now, this message is customizable by me for our area, so it can say anything that we want. We've taken advantage of this particular pop up during COVID to say, please use Playtime Scheduler and put your name down for tracing purposes so we can contact you. We've used it for surveys for Portland Parks and Rec even that wanted feedback on pickleball. We've used this for a lot of different, even for local um, Parks and Rec that want feedback on pickleball. We've used this site. Uh, Lake Oswego Parks and Rec recently used it for a survey they had. They got a total of 588 responses on their survey. So it's just a great tool that a lot of pickleball players are using to get you plugged in. Okay, so after I acknowledge this, I say got it. Okay, so these little bubbles here are all different uh, locations throughout the Portland, Vancouver area. If I click on it, it'll expand it. So this is Wilsonville Memorial Park. They have played today on Tuesday the 20th. Tells me how many players. They set a, a maximum of 35 and a weight of 10. Then you can also put a note down on your session. So that's what happened here. They said play is free to all Columbia River members. It's a dollar donation for non-members. So you can set guidelines on your play sessions if you create them. So this, and they're all linked. The color is all region-based. So you can look at different regions of where you live and know which part of town you're looking at. So for these, we schedule all the way up in um, we have some Vancouver and Camas with Shugal on here as well that we go up into. Salem has their own region, so this is just Portland, Vancouver region. Uh, we were so large that we created our own. So it's heavily used. This is also um, Tualatin City Park. Another one that's heavily used is uh, Gladstone. Also, oh, this is George Rogers. Um, the other park in Tiger use Summer Lake uses yeah. that quite heavily as well. Yeah. So um, when you're creating a play session, this is one other feature that I did want to show you that the creator of the play session. I'm going to create a play session. I also coordinate play out of this church in Canby that's just down the road. Um, during fall and winter, we go indoors and play there. So I have a specific lesson. Each, lo each location has a message here as well when you're creating a session. So I can set parameters here. I can set a skill level, the time. I can put a wait list as well with my features that I have and limit my numbers. Now down here, when I'm about ready to add, look at this box. I have to check this box before it will let me add it. I acknowledge that a play session on Playtime Scheduler is not a court reservation system and does not give my group special rights to a court. I must follow the venue's rules for court sharing and rotation. So it's really educating people that use this site. And if we, as the responsible pickleball players, oh, I'm going to say there's always a few bad apples with every group. There really is. And they do spoil it for everyone. 
but the responsible players will immediately school you on that if they show up and say we had this court reserved you didn't they're first come first serve it's it's a meetup tool is all of this is so um we feel like we do a really good job of being stewards of that and educating people so um i did want to fess up with you guys that we did i do apologize but we did put it on playtime scheduler to see what would happen with maple street this report here i'm gonna interrupt you a second yes. that was that was my doing uh, jeff robinson i well, i me... said to heidi i want to put it out there i want to see what kind of activity get on it we don't have any advertising at the courts whatsoever it was purely word of mouth to see if it helped in, in getting people to know who's playing, how many are playing, how busy the courts are, etc. And part of the informational message on there was a message that said, this is a test. This is not endorsed. This is not approved. It's purely me as a pickleball player wanting to see, does this make a difference for us? Right. Pure. Um, and then I understand there were a couple of complaints that came into the well, city in yeah. some form. Yeah, they came to the city and maybe this is a good time to venture off. And there, there were some, yeah, I'm going to have to do it. There were some complaints. And then I called Heidi and said, you know, we want to remove our venue yeah. from this until we can have a meeting sure. like this and explain a yeah. little, little further. Yeah. Ken Daniels is uh, works on park staff and he had to get involved in one of those. Yeah, go ahead. Through the phone, someone. Someone called maybe it was someone in here that called that but this in that situation with people running the first reserve. It would have been people in here because we don't reserve courts. Exactly. And it was somebody that was yeah. was saying that these people were coming in. So okay, gotcha. uh, but then at that time, as we all know, their first come first search yeah. posted on there and everything. Mm -hmm. Now I learned about the playtime scheduler. I'm glad to hear him. Yeah. This is educational. Yeah, I would like to clear it up. Yeah. So right now, I it's not on there. This is in our, um, I did want to tell you what my process is though, as an administrator. I do not contact every Parks and Rec department when I get a suggested location. So for example, here's my suggested location. Somebody else emailed me again about Maple Street Park um, to suggest, because it's a valid park. So whoever this person is, DC Pruitt at AOL, I have no idea who they are, but they're, Saying, hey, there's pickleball courts here. I get multiple repeat info. This one, Wilsonville Memorial Park, they're already on there. Um, but I don't, I have to go in, I have to look at it, look at their info. It's usually wrong. Like this person even put the city was wildlife. <laughs> and they said that the area was not even, you know, it was Northeast Portland. So um, that I would just delete that request. It's already on there. I bought park in Swallowton. I know that that's a valid park. I Google it and say, yeah, there's two ports there and it all looks great. I save it and then I'm gonna hit the screen button because it's a real park and now it's live. That's all I do. I, I don't, if I got paid for this, I would call the Parks Park Department and say, hey, would you like your ports on? I don't get paid for this, this is volunteer. And that's fine, no, it's yeah. you did, but. So I'm just telling you my have, process of approving right. court locations that are legitimate. It's like having an address. I confirm 7-Eleven, is that that address? Boom, it's on. So I'm just letting you know what my normal process right. is. We don't have parks that, you know. Yeah. Number one, we. I wanted to hear the explanation. This is not a reservation system. Correct. It is just a, hey, it's a tender for pickleball, right? Yeah. You know, let's be done. Oh, boy. I want to play pickleball. I want to play now. I'm It's like, I'm going to be at Maple Street Park at 9 o'clock, you know, and I'm a level four. Let's be up there. But we have some people that, don't adhere to the reservation yeah. thing and they think you know they come from portland and they say hey, i got this court reserved at nine o'clock well that's when the players point to the sign and say it's first come first serve we get these courts for an hour exactly yeah. so exactly that's, you wait your turn you wait your turn right. and so i the numbers on this sheet let me get to that real quick so i can leave time for those guys yeah i suppose there are four people standing around that place 
and here. And there's other four people over here. These ones just walk off the street without no cars or vehicles. These people communicated with you and they're listed there. And you told them and told them you don't have a reservation. There. What happens about these four waiters and these four waiters? They're going to most likely, well, depending on if all the courts are full, you mean? Yeah, courts are all full. Cool. Cool. people waiting. Some and people the people playing. waiting usually will, will look at their watch, 645. They're going to say, hey, we're waiting for a court. One of you has to get off by 745. You have one hour. That's really ideally. Or depending on who's playing, they may say, you guys want to rotate in. You know, I yeah, can't. That's and that's what, yeah, that's what this group has been doing. Done. That's what this group has been. That's why I wanted them to come because they've been the ones. Marguerite is mainly yes. the one that scheduled these sessions and very inclusive. That's why I wanted her to come. As an administrator, I can also set limits, which I have done with uh, Summer Lake and Tiger in agreement with their Parks and Rec that only one person can schedule those courts. And so it's locked down. You cannot privately create a play session at Summer Lake because I've locked it down to one email address to create them. And so I know it's not being abused because it's one person. And as Marguerite was doing, she was doing a 14 max. So when you see these numbers where it says 20, for example, on your first page, July 15th, she, and that includes the wait list. So she had 14 players with a wait list of six and she was only utilizing two courts at that time. So, um, I just can I say something to them? Yeah. When I make these sessions, I am very friendly. I talk to everybody, and Ronnie can attest to that because she came. As I get into she the, came with yeah. her daughter and her daughter's baby, and they were just playing ball back and forth. And I went and talked to her and talked about pickleball. And I says, "Come and join us." And I said, "How do I do this?" Yeah, she said, well, you, you just know. show up. You just show up. Yeah. Yeah. We're friends now. Do a lot of, do you go to the pickleball courts without going, do you show up not going on playtime schedule or do you just go to the courts and? Do you want my story now or do you want to finish what she's doing? Because I can talk a little bit on that. I think I'm pretty much done unless you guys have any questions for me before I turn it over to I, Sam. No, I think I've heard, okay. I, I mean, I feel yeah. better okay. about what you're saying. I did want to, one more key thing is signage is key. So mm -hmm. if you do, um, you know, stress, you guys already have that it's an hour wait, but add one more sign that says playtime scheduler That's is true. not a reservation system. If a session is created, you're still subject to that one hour max limit. I think that's good. And I think that would really uh, solve a lot of these issues, especially you're educating your users to read that signage, educate yourselves, and, and utilize the tools that we have. Otherwise, new players that come out, they don't have a way to connect with other new players. Um, if you have apps like GroupMe or WhatsApp, those are great if you have an established club where you have everybody's phone numbers. If you don't have everybody's phone numbers, you have no way. If I'm dropping from out of town, I can look and see where a play is and go play somewhere and get a pickup game, which a lot of people do be surprised. Okay. So, if I could insert one thing, and I don't want to hear you sure sure. about it. Yeah, um, as a Canby resident myself, we do not have a club, so we don't have any real organization to play here. That's an issue for us. I'm very interested as a Canby resident in starting a club. I'm also perfectly willing in that leadership role that I would assume probably in starting a club to, if we could put some signage up around Playtime Scheduler that educate people on its availability and how it works, and a contact name and phone number or a phone number there. Um, I'm happy to do that, and I'd be glad to have that go to me so that they divert from the city. Because I know you don't have the staff for the hours to pick up those kind of calls and answer. Correct. And, and I would have no issue in being involved in something of that nature if we want to talk about doing that, whether it's here or another time. Or so um, just my experience with the business world and coaching and Next over the years, signage information sharing is key. Mm -hmm. And we put the test out there and it got lots of use, some good benefits, a couple of comments that were not so great. We did forewarn you because I wanted I didn't want you to know what was going on. I wanted to see if we got complaints because I knew you'd say something. 
So, so I just I'll throw that out there. It can be a discussion at whatever time, but I, I truly believe this will be a way to help the community as a whole, but only if it's communicated. And I would be happy to be a part of some process by which we can eliminate calls to the city, which I know has got to be a concern. Right. That's that was the reason why I called. I did also want to encourage you guys to read the last two letters in your packets. The very last page is a couple that lives in Cami. They couldn't be here tonight. They're in their 80s and they live in Cami, still out there playing. And uh, they wrote a really great letter as well about inclusivity. And, and so I'm going ahead and. and I, well, I talked to Mark Schubel two days ago. Mark was a, a donor for the Cook Ball Coach. He's, he's an advocate for playtime scheduling. He wants to see the courts utilized. He's very happy with what's been going on and how they're utilized. And he's there two or three times a week with his wife. So, um, you know, he's, he's happy with it, but he understands that there could be a few. Yep. Straight chats. Yep. There always are. I mean, we deal with them all the time. So, oh, yes. Yeah. Do you have any data in some of your newer groups about people who've been in touch with you feeling some sort of terror? I mean, they know it's not a reservation, but they have sense of entitlement about I'm here and I uh, signed up with you, talking to a person who just walked off the street and the exchange can produce some very unpleasant behavior. So, how much data have you got about? How big a problem that is. Well, if it's a foursome, so I equate this to this. If you privately set up a game, let's say it's you and your grandkids and your spouse, and you privately set up a game on a court, let's pretend it was tennis. You're never going to walk up to those tennis players and say, Can I play with you, please? They would look no, at I'm you. I'm talking about people I know. <laughs> but I'm the people waiting, they still wait that that hour. I don't think um, that. I only asked how much data you have. I don't have any personally. No, I know. Entitlement. If it happens, I would say it happens more with the higher level players, honestly. The five O's, would you agree that the pros can be a little more entitled about the courts? Oh, absolutely. We've had that happen in club play times where Wilsonville has an agreement with, with the, the club, for example, or Willamette River does in Westland. The, 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 the courts are reserved for the clubs from 9 to 11. And they get there, and there's a group of five O's who are pro level playing, and they they are like, well, we got here, and we're just going to use the sports. So entitlement more in the higher level players. The lower level players, I would say, no. Most of them are so excited that other people want to try out this sport, they want to share it, which is not more creating that for friend and encouraging. So I can't say it doesn't happen, but it does. And I don't have specific data to that, but I play a fair amount here in town. Um, I can think of three occasions where if all of the courts were busy, that I was playing with a group, but we just texted and called each other to get there, where people were waiting to get on. And in some cases came up, two of the cases came up to our court and said, hey, can we play here too? And my response was, yeah, we would get a group and we'll play our hour, but if you want to join us, I'd be glad to rotate out and have you come in. And one lady did. The other one was like, oh, no, thank you. Uh, you <laughs> Most know. of them are really intimidated when yeah, you're out yeah, of their exactly. playing level. So, so it's, it's like anything else. You'll have some people that are good eggs to help. You'll have some people that are not. You'll have some people that will show up and say, hey, I made a reservation, regardless what the application says. And how people deal with that is how people deal with it. I mean, you can't well, here in PMB, I've used three courts and uh, dad and son came up and we were within our hour limit and I said you guys after your game is done get up and get the court up yeah, because we're understand. friendly a court up to an individual or to all four no two oh, there was just a uh, it was just a couple of people dad and the, and the son okay and, I want to move along because we've got other I have been there when our group had been scheduled on playtime scheduler uh, before it was taken off. We got there, some people were playing, we let them play and waited. Yep. Um, that's, that's what we so, have meant to do. Yep. Yep. 
Okay, long story short, she already started it. Um, I was happened upon the course, you know, I was playing with my daughter a little bit, walking by, and saw these guys playing, and I'm like, you know, definitely want to get into it. Saw the courts were going to be built and all that, and asked Margaret, you know, how, how does this, what are you guys doing? You know, she, she explained playtime scheduler, and um, I did play two or three times every week all summer since. Um, but I did want to point out one very positive also about playtime scheduler that I, you don't even know I've been doing this, but um, there was someone that scheduled some other events like on a weekend that are lower. Uh, level players and I'm a long time youth coach here in Canby and I like to go play with them because I'm a teacher and I'm a coach and I think that's a tool also mm -hmm. to use for some of us that are a little higher level now because uh, I saw there were only three players and it'll get canceled unless they have four mm -hmm. and I just put myself out there to be the fourth player even though you know I was going to be I was just going to be the extra fourth person and the teacher that time even though it was you know, I love to play because I want them to be able to play. Sure. I love the sport. Now I want them to love the sport. I mean, I'm sure you guys want the courts used. Absolutely. Yes. So, you know, it's, it's great. They're awesome. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Go ahead. I have a couple questions. One, I assume these numbers here, people have gone to these little circles and clip on them and said, yes, we're going to be there at that time. So is there any, do we have any data on <clears throat> local versus people that are traveling out? I mean, we don't because this is not by zip code. And okay. even that, if we were to do zip code, a lot of these people could be snowbirds or have different zip codes, um, but they live in Canby, so it just depends which zip code they use when they register on the time schedule. Right. I wasn't sure people are like, they live in Selwood, but. Well, people I mean, will drive, honestly. <clears throat> trying to figure out that. I can't say that it's all Canby residents. People sure. will drive a half hour for good pickleball. Well, the, the Charbonneau courts are being redone. Okay. So we've had, for the last several weeks, we've had Charbonneau people. They're using two courts every morning. We'll take them to Canby. We'll you know, yeah. Uh, and my other one is, so it looks like these numbers kind of, there's a spike and then, uh, is there a correlation? Is there a, is that like a Tuesday morning? Clubs and, and you have 17, and then like the Wednesday night, no one shows up, or yeah. random, 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 and then we took an hour of playtime schedule, and now I have to travel yeah. to Oregon City to play. Well, another point I like to make is just the safety factor that I feel in we would, you know, call it if you want to call it a meetup. At least you're you're on a list with people that you know are going to meet at a certain time. I'm not just going to the court to see who shows up. And yeah. there's yeah. some security in that for me. Um, you know, if I recognize those names on there, then there's some ruins, mm -hmm. but I still recognize the names, so it just feels like a safe, secure place for that amount of time. So, one quick comment here before you get married. So, the big issue with this seems to be that whole one hour if you show up off the streets versus I'm entitled to do this. Is it a pipe dream to say, can we put up some type of clock? So, when you show up, you look like and you're like, yep, oh, 6:45, and so everybody knows versus. My watch says it's this time versus when, you know what I mean? I, I, I think it'd be subject to vandalism. Our experience yeah. in court and parks, I wouldn't recommend a plot. Most people are no, pretty I, generous about it. They're, you know, they're very yeah. generous. They like to speak of, they just call the police. Okay. So yeah. uh, <laughs> yeah. 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 we have not, uh, we got there on a Saturday and charged no people came and we have an issue with wet courts. That's a whole other story. Uh, but they played, they came early and played, they've already been there over an hour. And so now we didn't have a court because we didn't use the wet court. And so uh, they finished their game and says, these people are waiting. People are very generous and kind. It's, that's the standard in the tennis world as well, as well as a one hour wait. So a lot of people are, are really used to that. And then once you have your signage up, they can refer to that. It's the problem is when cities don't have a signage up, that's when you run into the I think we might be at a point where maybe we need to add another sign saying that it's not a reservation system, you know, just to make sure people are clear. Do you have anything? Does anybody else have anything they want to add because we need to move on? <laughs> uh, <laughs> very quickly. Um, I came before this board 
some six or seven years ago and got permission to put pickleball courts there on the old tennis courts. Uh, and that didn't quite, we almost got it set up, but it didn't quite materialize. These new courts are beautiful. Thank you very much for um, listening to people and putting them in there. Yeah, we have our that. park staff to thank for that. They, Jerry and Kevin, everybody had a, did a good job with those. Yes, yeah. I think we'll tell, we'll let these be, we can talk. I feel that if we put up the proper signage and make sure that people know that it's not a reservation system, but we're not going to vote now, but I think we, we just might need to add another sign, but we'll talk about it amongst the group. And then we'll I do appreciate the clarification. Yeah, we were yeah. confused. We thought with what you described today is exactly how I understood it to be. Yeah. And then when we had yeah, the conflicts, we're like, going. Like, yeah. Okay, so and it's a shame that Marguerite's not having to drive to Oregon City because people aren't coming here because it's not on playtime. Right. So um, well, we just we just want to eliminate the conflicts okay. that you know, we don't want to can. I totally agree. Steve had a great comment earlier. Yeah, 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 so we'll shift the shift yeah. the discussion just a little bit. I mean, I I love the chorus. I'm so glad that they put in. So thank you for that. Uh, <coughs> Said. But the other thing that I that I find is really annoying going over there on the courts is three nice courts and a wet court. And the reason it's wet is being watered. So oh. I'm sure that can be adjusted somehow or another. We tried <coughs> to adjust that. The problem is it's not so detailed. It's like for some sprinkler, you can just dial them in just, just right. That one that we found is almost coming from the field, and they're just huge. What I call the sprinklers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so we have to kind of like do we want? Right grass, a ball so yes. in one of the letters in there from Bruce Hardy, he said he won't play on those courts because he's seen people fall and slip. Mm -hmm. And when you're in your 70s and 80s, you don't want people falling on your courts. Yeah. You sure is that on the splash pad? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe look at that. Yeah. I'm sure. Yeah. We, I'm sure we can dial that. Yeah. Our, sure. There should be a shield even. Our park staff will yeah. take a look Thank at you. that. And, and, and while we're at it, some sprinkler thing. Same, same, same deal over at the, at the uh, junior high school over on the south side there. They're spraying that. They're watering the track. Yeah, we don't have any. I know, maybe John had any. Good luck with that. That's the school. Yeah. What? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I can give you the contact for that question. But, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean, write it down. does it bother me? No, I just walk around it. I don't really use it. I don't run around it, but it just didn't destroy the crowd. Well, that's scary. Yeah. Well, Heidi, thank you for coming and clearing this, this up. And we'll, I'll be back with you in the next week or so. Yeah, okay. Thank you guys for hearing us out. Thank you for yeah, hearing our, our great yeah. For Jerry and Jerry, you both have my contact information. And if there's a desire to do something where there's Thank somebody you. that you see as head of the city, we can talk about that. Uh, we'll use your muscle. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, and, and if there's any concern about the phone number changing or that me changing or that kind of thing, we can do a phone number that would be the same, but sent someplace. Yes. So there's two yeah. options on that. That number you gave me is that a Shamansi number? Which one did I give you? I know. 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 I Department update. <laughs> yeah. Jeff Schneider is on vacation, so Ken Daniels is there filling in for Jeff and then Jerry. You know, it's all schmooze and that usual. So. <laughs> um, so go ahead and if you just can just walk right sure. down through the local yeah. business and let us know. Yeah, a couple of things here. Um, just uh, the long awaited. Uh, Picnic shelters that we have for locusts is finally here. It just arrived today. It's set up there now. I know it's been a long time coming. I thought it was going to be tomorrow morning, but then they called. I was surprised. Anyway, it's up there right now. 
So that's good news. That's here. Are we on the hook with the installer? Um, officially, I don't know the exact date, but it turns like October. The, the installer has like a window. They're trying to hold like a few weeks window. Yeah. To start the ball rolling. Yeah. Uh, I've got one other thing yeah. that I was asked. I need to bring up to Jerry probably. I, um, uh, Bridging Cultures contacted us, and they would like a, uh, an outside water faucet added to Locust Street Park. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, to Maple Street Park, uh, next phase of a project, I know we've got quite a bit going on there for the past year or a couple of years, but not a big one, but uh, we're kind of finishing up the netting on the back uh, field there. So we've done some netting before on the very back fence. Now we're kind of finish up the north end of that netting. And he does it run the IA in the news. The cable is going to be installed here soon. Um, it's been estimated, I think it's at $5,000. And but uh, that needs to be done. Yeah. It's going to happen very soon here. Um, I think you have about the community park. I do have a copy. Actually, I can bring one up here. Jerry, I mentioned the water faucet. Yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah, okay. Yeah, since we can, since Jeff's on vacation, we can do all kinds of stuff, right? <laughs> can bring up that. Just click on the uh, one for this one here. I do have copies of this too. If somebody can see it firsthand. Yeah. Up here, kind of a bird's eye view of the community park. Kind of get your bearings on it a little bit. Um, yeah. There's a screen on the back. Yeah, the bigger screen. You kind of see where Bird Parkway is, the entrance to the actual park. Yeah, you know, coming down, then you have the, the first large parking lot where most most of the people eat their lunch on the summer days, you know, obviously swim right there. Um, mainly with this is showing where proposal of new couple of new restrooms. Um, obviously the existing restroom will be demolished and a new restroom will be put in the existing spot. The new spot site is over there by the uh, uh, there's that one game, I think it's called Gaga Ball, I believe. And right between that and the baseball field there. That's a really good spot because of all the activity I see, the people parking there, uh, it's a good spot for wrestling out the box so far. And there's going to be additional parking, which is what this kind of a hashtag line is. So all that would be kind of taken out and a whole bunch of new parking just right there. So it's, it's really a huge need, especially in the summer months. Uh, we have people parking all the way up Ace Hardware up above, walking down. <laughs> so uh, I think we can use a little bit less land to gain some more uh, parking there would help a lot. So everybody kind of see that. I know it's kind of a weird bird's eye, but you kind of see the river right there. But uh, yeah, so that's basically showing that. You guys book that copy, of course, with the poster look at that. And How many additional spots did you mention? Uh, or do we say the 64? 64. Wow. Yeah. So there'll be two new restrooms then, if we can afford it. Well, once it goes out of bed, we'll see around a bunch of that we yeah. don't have to. You know, it's kind of hard to see how so, that would be. Yeah, I get one. Where do you put it? The new spot or the old? That's a good question. Is that again, sir? If you only get away, the budget says oh, please only get to one. one. Probably there, right? I, you have to put it by the park. <clears throat> I was, yeah, that's, no, I do like that. The new spot. Uh, we would sure, uh, we would, Brian, probably we'd look at design. Like and see. Care and all that, yeah. yeah, and then we'd probably take a recommendation from the advisory committee on, hey, do you want to keep the old one? Plus add one, or if you want to get rid of it, I think I think that'd be it. We're we're hoping for two. Have you asked Mr. Baines if he would 
No, I was asking you were just showing the park budget. But if that's a request from the advisory committee, I well, have to. he said to navigate. That's what I thought. No, I don't know if they've, if they've, if you guys, have you they seen this scenario yet? Uh, we have not. Yeah. We were, we were, uh, our city administrator asked us to share this with you guys. So, but the nice thing is, you have the Boy Scouts, new water, new sewer, all of that is pumped up to her park place, so no more septic system down there. So it'd be a whole new system just for that one. All of it, yeah. Water and the water line is old and they have constant leaks with it, so that'd be upgraded. And then um, it would be a grinder pump and it would be gravity all the way down to here to the spot well and then pumped up the hill to our to our bird parkway. So currently it's just a septic. Yeah, over here somewhere by the pond. What's the budget for this? Five oh five, I think. Five hundred five thousand. For the additional part on the other two restrooms. Yeah. And all the piping. That was our internal yeah. plan, but we're hoping we'll get it because it was, we started this kind of early, so that not what it cost to when we get it out to bid. But we're, we got all this stuff going right now, so we're just trying to, we'd like to start this at the right time. So yeah. we don't, well, know, let's interrupt the park too bad. So that part's in need of some upgrade. What, what we're doing is over here, we have a pump station on the backside of Safeway, a sewer pump station that we're trying to get rid of and gravity it around. So I'd like to include it with that project. So we're trying to get working with the railroad and ODOT again. So that's why we've been kind of held up on it. But uh, this one's pretty close to full design. Since sure. this is an extension of parking and a restroom, is this STC eligible? It seems like yeah. it should be. Yes. Okay, so maybe access the slides. Yeah, the direction that we were given by council was to use for internal funds to do this. But it could be it's eligible for us to see absolutely. Has the but less when when does this go out to be? I'm waiting to hear back from ODOT on another project that might come separately, but probably I'd like to get it out to bid in a couple months. So that's our goal. But everything's so busy right now, we're just trying to scramble. Why are we waiting on ODOT? Because I'm combining this with another project, okay. which I, uh, and we're to get so to get rid of the Safeway pump station, I have to bore underneath 99, and we're going to run it to the third Baker pump station. So it's a sewer project that I'm trying to combine it with, just to save cost, get get the price down on this. So, but we're running out of time. We don't want to be doing this during the, the busy time. So we need to get going on it. So. We're, we're taking that into consideration. But, um, we're just plugging away with all this design, trying to keep moving forward. But we we're waiting on surveys, we're waiting on that. I might just, I hate to, I think if I eliminate this from the state food project, it's gonna get really expensive. So, what's the problem with that? Last time I you saw know, it, it looks looks not bad. great. Uh, really? it, I mean, if it was gonna be bad, it'd be bad now. Yeah, you know, that's a two-year project and last year I was kind of wondering if it was right but this year it's like the bottom I haven't seen the bottom you know obviously so it should get better if you're in other words maintaining that with that chemical it and takes a while yeah. the other thing I'm going to comment on this too is we're held up a little bit on design right now waiting for the uh, I think planning's looking at it Brian are you guys going to take a, I know that we put gave this to Dawn yeah we'll have to decide if the new parking is Inducing demand, and then we'd have to do a, at the very least, a traffic letter that looks at the additional trips that we generate. So, with that being, with that going on, we'll have to really look at scheduling on this and probably come back to advisory committee and city council on when you want to tear your park up. Nothing's easy, is it? That's just sample. <laughs> We're gonna get it done. It's just it went see it it's nice to winter. Even if we had to prolong it and start it, we could really uh I'd like to start it. Yeah, yeah. like tomorrow. Get like, to dig up all that dark all the dark lines there. Is that what gets done? Up? That's a lot of directional boring. Everything that we can open trench and put back restore with grass, we're gonna dig. But all this like under the sidewalks and up the hill and into the bird parkways, all directional boring. 
a lot of direct trouble. Yeah. Yeah. And I might have. Uh, oh, you want me to bring that up? Yeah, I can find that. I mean, what is this one? You know, yeah. a good example of the, the two oh. restrooms, if we could. I mean, there's some really neat. One of it's kind of like the timber restroom, if you're familiar with the timber park, right. modular, just awesome. We have clean in restrooms early in the parks department for years. It's just one of the best rest and same with transit, best restrooms to clean. It's just, you know. <coughs> yeah. And there's, this is what Jeff kind of was looking at. There's a lot of different options. That's, that's the area. That's, that's that's right. area. Yeah. That kind of complements the, the yeah. A-frame. Yeah, a little bit in the, kind of the forest area of the park. It's got the price. It's got all the stuff. I don't know. Yeah, the base price is like 55 but you go up from there depending on what you want to inside. It's right, 58 50. So this, then I was told to Jeff look into it would take a plot if it flooded down there. They just won't have all of that. Oh. Yeah, they're just totally concrete. Is that the one? Is that going to be both, what they'll both look like? The one below and the one above? Yeah, they'll both look good. Yeah. Really yeah. It looks good. I guess so. Yeah. 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 They're 88, just you can see. Mm -hmm. and I, the one in timber, I know, I mean, you can go in there with a yeah, power washer. Okay. Yeah. yeah. They look great. Yeah. Good. Okay. Fine. Right. Perfect. I think that's all right that way as far as parts stuff. That's Jerry had stuff for it. Well, we go on to the proposed park budget and we just set with 1.2 million. Is that, is that correct? Is that where we're at, Jerry? What's that? Uh, park budget for this budget cycle. Uh, the amount of money, 1.2 million. Yeah, let me grab my budget real quick. While you're doing that, uh, Mayor, you said uh, the proposal to name and rename city parks is with uh, Joe Lindsay, correct? Yeah, Joe has it. Joe's reviewed it. And uh, my hope is to get it on the agenda for the second meeting in October as we are can canceling the first meeting because all the council is at the League of Oregon City's conference. So that will be next meeting in October. <coughs> Sounds good. Yep. So we got 127000 and equipment, which this this when you look at this budget, it's not in the right line. The hundred thousand is for the local street shelter, and the twenty seven thousand is for the bar. And then we have a million dollars for master plan projects. Okay, and we so and city council has it. I mean, we've set in our list of proposed projects, and they haven't entertained. They haven't entertained those yet. Is that correct? They are. Reviewing the list that you guys put in, and then um, staff is going to look at it and do a comparable, make sure that we look at it. That was a request from council, and then we're going to implement this into the CIP, update the CIP with it. I think it's I think it's all going to look fine very because the nice thing about it is if they want us to look at it, we worked with you guys on it, so it was kind of our input too. So it should, that's why I was telling uh, Mr. Archer today. So. Sorry, yeah. Chart available to you. This is on the website, <laughs> or we could print you a copy. If you can, but, um, this is on the city yeah, website. Absolutely, yeah. I will pass that on to you. Thank you. So, the very Ken's got the uh, this here is the out of that SDC update. This is the old CIP that went through. That we kind of adjusted and it went through budget committee so this is adopted by council and so these are projects without updating since we don't have the the uh sdc update for the master plan yet this we can still work on so you're saying that we can't work on auburn farms player I'm not saying that because I oh, talked to the city administrator today and he thinks it's an excellent project. So he's the boss. So I think that these, it, that's 100% new development and that's been in there. It's just, it's 100% eligible for SDCs. And I think if it was a project that we wanted to do, the well, city the administrator would support it. The people that did the master plan identified that area as an area void of uh, recreation or park. 
We well, think it's a great project. Okay. Right. The city does. Uh, Scott does. We do. Jeff. Jeff's been wanting to do it for years. So right. um, that million dollars, I think, we could really look at that for that or any of these projects. Which one? That one. I and Barbara, I can make you a copy right now. Oh, you see it right email. The video I have these copies. It's on the website. You can look at it. Yeah, I will send you that though, Barbara. I'll send it to Jerry. Just forward it to everyone. You bet. Hey, Jerry, what's the at the Lake Park playground? The asset replacement. That's the the equipment's getting old there, and we just put it in there just so that we could update that okay. equipment. Oh, I see. Well, but, you know, Jeff and I got talking about it and we we're like, we, we don't know what we're going to do with Park. I know that that's a big one that we'd like to. So we kind of pushed that out, but it's still in there if we wanted to do something there. And wait. But this was kind of just a working progress CIP while, while we were waiting for the master plan to get done. The next uh, parks maintenance fee, and I don't know if everybody was. Uh, Aware that council approved that in perpetuity or forever. Right now it's six at five dollars and sixty-one cents uh, per household. So I mean, I just basically that's just an update. I don't there's not a lot of discussion to be had about it. That's the way it is right now. So, is, is that a permanent price for update or can it? Increase. Oh, increase. Yeah, it's set to increase three percent a year or so. Um, with it being no sunset provision, um, the council protected but not necessary to price it out in the future. Right. right. So yeah, whenever I guess the council says stop, is like they'll stop. Okay. The next item that we had was the parks recreation website. Ryan, I don't know if you want to chime in on that since you know the most about that. The parks recreation website, am I catching you off guard? Yeah. Did we talk about that? I have an update on that. Okay. Sorry, Ryan. I didn't like to go on this. But we have a meeting uh, scheduled with Scott Archer and city staff just to get like what the city administrator's ideas are for this to kind of regroup on Tuesday. Okay, now we have kind of since Terry Jones has, has been in that position at Westland, worked on, uh, the, on the recreation side, we've asked that, you know, she be kind of our liaison for our board to, re, to report back to us as this goes on, the developing of this website. And it's premature to have her in that meeting with you guys. The, so, uh, yeah, we uh, we just, I'd like to get Scott's take on it, his background with all that before we start having you folks in there. But uh, I, we're gonna have a quick meeting with all of us, talk about it, see what it is, and then hopefully schedule a meeting fast with Terry and whoever else wants to be on that, because we don't care whoever wants to come to that and just get input because you guys this was your guys' idea so right. well is the library considered city staff city staff city staff or city staff or okay. I mean she does work for the well you could you could send an email to the city administrator requesting that she goes to it if you like so right. I'm just doing it directly and using the word recreation we're talking about programming not building Right. Not building. Program. No. On the website. Yeah. Perfect. Program. Okay. Uh, we've done Jerry, the business schedule during work time, right? Yeah. We've we've hashed up um Mike and Fed um, Bruce was going to come to the meeting, uh, but he was unable to attend. But um, he did want to um, thank you guys at uh, city staff for jumping all over the recommendation you have. They have striped that area that they talked about. It was wide enough. If you were going to measure, you've got 48 inches on either side, so that straight fits ADA requirements or whatever. Now there's been, you're going to put in some arrows 
directional arrow. I got a follow up with Jeff when he gets back. He was working on that with him. But I think, I believe so. Yeah. Okay. All right. That was my bed. All right. We are. Is anybody else? Yeah. Oh, good. Good. Okay. I have citizen <laughs> input. So. Karen, do you have anything to say? Mr. Pro, Mr. Perez, nothing to add. Karen, I have over 300 signatures on the dog park petitions, and I'm going to present them tomorrow night at the citizen input portion of the city council meeting. And um, I'm encouraging everybody to come. So hopefully, there will be lots of movies and lots of seats. And um, so we can really have a powerful message. <clears throat> okay. Seven o'clock is that what time that starts? Yes. And the, there's only like Pledge of Allegiance and then it goes right into public input. So people can do their deal and get out. Isn't there a citizen input thing at the end of the meeting too? There is. Yeah, if there's something that maybe came up during the meeting or somebody Came in late, but still wants to address the council on something. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you. That's what I would be saying, Greg Perez. Uh, very impressed with the cleanup on the October 5th that you just had. We had multiple events at Wake Park. Um, you know, kind of we said different things over different meetings, looking through. But boy, after that weekend, to have other park staff come through that, you did a heck of a lot of cleanup. Yeah, that was the right spot. It was the president, so I appreciate that. Not one yeah. phone call. Wow. That was a great one. Did you get one? No. Yeah, not one. Well, that's that's so, I didn't call anybody. Wow. Yeah. That's awesome. I got I mean on on, on my garbage cans on the floor. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Or, yeah. You know, they, that was that and the car show is always a, it's pretty, a big one. Pretty good one. Yeah. Oh, but thanks for bringing that up. Yeah, thanks, Greg. Yeah, thanks. Lisa. I've been giving this dog park a lot of thought over the last several months and how we as a group, as a board, have defrayed from making any sort of recommendations to the council because primarily we were honoring <coughs> the council's direction that we don't do anything until the master plan is adopted. And that has been adopted now. And our board has never taken a formal position on the current location of the dog park. I think we all have discussed it. We all have um, expressed our own opinions, but I wonder if it's an opportunity at this point to formally be on the record about what our position is at the Redwood Territorial Service Road location. So, yeah. Well, I, I need to say Gary made a, an impassioned, a very clear statement to the city council at the end of last at the city council meeting. Mm -hmm. So, if your concept is maybe we should find out what this, this committee is, either is not the best. Yeah, well, I, I do have a motion. I've been thinking about it. I have a motion. So, you're trying to find it. So, before we voted on. Wait for the master plan to be completed. Remember, we've, we've yeah. gone through it's that. We've been close and it's been held back up. Yeah. And that we would oh, wait yeah. until the master plan, because that's what the council asked us to do. They didn't want us to make any decisions. So, so, so now what is it that you have, might have a conversation about? About a formal position on, on the current location of the park. Because we've never done that. We've all talked about it. There's been some concerns, I think, expressed about the location and the cost. Well, we've kind of set our, the sites have been set up on location. We haven't vetted any other potential locations that should be considered. I do want to focus on the location question, and it probably should happen after you make your motion. Let's have a special big okay. motion. And I do have copies because it's kind of a wordy that there's quite a bit. I'll read it if you want it. Then I, I said, um, Mr. Chairman, I move that the Canby Parks and Recreation Advisory Board recommend to City Council the Parks and Recreation Advisory Board oppose 
the location of the proposed dog park at Territorial Road, Redwood Street, and the Service Access Road for unsuitable location, including failure to meet the National Park dog park siting guidelines, and instead request that the other suggested locations, including the Honda Pits and the Long River State Park, be thoroughly analyzed for suitability and affordability. Thank you. Okay. Ready for second. So we have a motion. We have a second to that motion. Second. Terry Jones. No, I have no discussion. <laughs> I am concerned about using the location as, as the primary topic because the land mass of Tandy is not big enough to have a whole lot of choices for location. So at the moment, the only location that we've heard, heard about or I think we talked about were the pit and the, law, the state park and the pit, which is a ground field, and it's, it's, it's a difficult stage in its, in its life. In any event, it seems to me that there are no obvious other choices, and I don't want to vote on the location to turn into a vote on whether or not there should be a dog park in Tandy, because I don't, I don't, I don't know how much agreement there is or isn't about like where would other locations be, assuming that working with the state government is, is assuming that that's not possible. You mentioned that the contents or the police station yeah. would be difficult. The location where they're proposing to put it right now is probably more difficult. The pit is a ground field, and I, I don't know a whole lot about the technical detail about what the federal government says about ground fields, but I do know that it's compromised. Yeah. Ground field means it's a landfill, right? Yeah. It's not full of toxins. Um, if you want to go into that big a degree, because I looked it up, because Mr. Parker and I talked about this. You built a police department on it. You build homes on it, right? No. You build a park no. down there. They're right on top. It's, it's all part of the park. That was, that was all. Uh -huh. on the so that's a moot point. I don't want to hear it again. Yeah. It's a done deal. We have the data and everything to verify. Okay. So um, go ahead and finish. Then I want. To oh, that's right. I want. I want. I, I guess I won't protest the use of location be the factor that we are voting on. It is not a motion about whether or not there should be a dog park, or it, and it does not no. suggest a particular solution. Just, no. And we're saying you look at other locations and then compare to a comparison shot. Does it make sense to spend 900000 500000 200000 Where do you stand? Well, we really don't know. Well, I mean, we no, don't, we know, don't because know because I'm just throwing out there. Across any of the options. Yes. And I think we'd like to know. I mean, I would like to know yes. as a citizen and as a representative of our citizen that I think we are responsible to making responsible decisions or recommendations based upon. May I hear any comments about what's wrong with the this location? This location? I, I can say it may be anything wrong with it, but we don't know because we haven't looked at any. No, I don't mean it. I mean, it's the current location. Right. That's what I'm saying. We have looked at the pit or Mall River State, we haven't looked anywhere other than they just said there's potentially a million dollars and it's going to be a hit. Yeah. But if we already have infrastructure in place at Mall River State Park and they're on board. It's on a major yeah. arterial road that's getting busier oh. as the years okay. go by. I don't know if you've seen the latest. I don't think you did. The deck distracted on what might be right and wrong with that part. I'm just trying to get a handle on why location is the is the factor that is being well, it's like, not necessarily the major factor, right? the cost is the main issue and the safety issue. Um, I don't know if you've seen this one, Barbara, the newest. I don't want to know about the long conversation, so I, I've heard the answer to my question. What was you had mentioned, uh, standard or something that did not meet a... the national parks, sure, um, national parks, that's the first step dog that parks. I, what is that? Because of the noise and the traffic of the territory. Is it the fire and traffic noise? Is that what you're referring to? And traffic and the increased traffic on territorial, and it's continuing because of the um, there's the traffic on territorial. <laughs> <laughs> and there's anticipated, uh, Tom Scott is from 
apartment complexes across this way from Echo Park. And so I was suggesting why those trees should come. <laughs> that didn't work out. <laughs> that's all. Cool. Uh, okay, now the first I read about no, that. No, I have to no comment. I mean, we have, do we have more discussion? I think we should point out that 10 years ago when the site was selected, according to the Kilgore, the park was and the and the dedication to the property was already set aside for a park. It didn't necessarily say a dog park, but there was provisions for a park to go in as part of that area. So it was already paid for in the parks department, paid for demolition of the house and the barns and, and the well. So that should be factored in and then you'd say, oh, we're going to give you a portion of this entire thing because we've already paid for a portion. According to the To which I will add that I have been for now going on seven years an advocate for the dog park in this location. In fact, I chaired a committee for a year, which was at the time that there was a whole lot of turnover in the city administration. Um, that is to who, say who the city administrators were. The, the recommendation of the committee, you can see the five or six years ago of our committee was a strong positive and that's where the original plan was referred to as Matilda's plan came from mm -hmm. and that was my committee that worked on it and she did some more work on it later and a lot of bells and whistles came. But there are a lot of things that have changed that, that no I understand I, I do absolutely no. yeah, and but, did they also look at other locations back at that time or were yes. they fixated on well, that? Can, I, don't, I don't want to delay the vote I just want to say that I will oppose this motion but I will oppose it because I've been working very hard with a committee, with a group, a committee, a then planner, a then city administrator opposed and viciously opposed to that location and anything to do with dogs. So, so I can, you can imagine some humor that has to do with what should happen to the city administrator. Anyway, um, I, I want to express that objection to the motion. And we'll stick with it. And I hope there will be others who will consider that the long history and the work that's, been, that's being done now and the, the opinions of city council, which they will express in their, at their time in their way. But I want to point out that there is opposition to the opposition about the implementation of the well, we can talk about. You know, there's opposition. <coughs> They're going forward. Yes, well, that's partially my thought. All right, so we have a motion. Any, any other, any further discussion? Scott. So <clears throat> I'm just sick of hearing a dog park. Is anybody? I don't think anybody in here is against the dog park. It's the money being spent on the dog park. Um, I drive down that area every day and it just gets busier and busier. I can't even imagine when that four way stop comes in, a dog park, the fire trucks coming out, city staff coming out. Um, the Andrus girls, who I know personally, sold that prop. Correct me if I'm wrong. Sold that property to wastewater. In the in the ordinance that it was purchased with, it was purchased with wastewater funds, but it was to be used. It could be used for our future development or parks. Okay. So Mark's right on that. Yeah. And I do believe he is correct. That the parks department paid for removing the house, decommissioning the well, and that there. So, okay. but um, the uh, the agreement when we worked with Greg Ellis on this, one of the city administrators I was talking about, is they would take three acres and then they would give us a portion of wayside if we needed it for our expansion for our wastewater facility. Okay. But we don't have a plan for that yet. We don't know what we need, but um, looking at it, it all kind of fits. So, so that money, <clears throat> should that money go into the new proposed dog park as part of the Does it have to be reimbursed to wastewater? You got to peel off 3.99 acres of that. And does that that's a good question? Money that's to about 85,000 bucks, right? Should, should that go on the dog park fee? The like reimbursed waste yes. water for the person that way. Yes. I mean, I, I think there's going to probably be conversation about that. Well, there's an Mayor, answer. do you know what's going on with that? I don't. That's a, I, it's the first that that's been 
actually brought up. You know, it's it's well, it's, it's interesting. Jeff and I were talking about this stuff. You know, it's like, and I I been a wastewater guy forever, so I would say yes, it was my yeah. say. You know, just because it was designated funds that paid for that, it was uh, restricted yeah. funds that bought that. They should get their money. But like the five acres that we traded of Eco Park for camp, the waste, the water treatment plant, the park land for their 54% of this was made too. So there's a lot of elk. And then the fire station went in and we did a lease on that. I like the lease because then you don't have to transfer funds. Yeah. It, it stays in wastewater's name. I don't know. That's just, but well, this is a bigger decision. To me. <laughs> well, that also goes back to, I mean, before I jump on the way back machine, mm -hmm. the, the police station proper, the portion yeah, of the police park station. Park. Was built on parkland as well. That's and so that was a conversation yeah. as well. Should yeah. now the city be reimbursing the parks for that land? Now, I don't know how that land came to be. Mm -hmm. That was the city scratching a check with park money. I don't know the history on that. I mean, it can be found out. Um, I guess, you know, so I mean, if there's a lot, you could say there's a lot of three card Monty going on here with. Right, you yeah. know, with, with property. So, right in front of the window, because that was yeah, originally it was supposed to be a park. It was supposed to be a community, it was right? a community a, 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 a big community park or a regional park. Mm -hmm. They both had all the fields and everything else. And then they put the houses in on part of it and the police station on part of it. The whole thing was for parks to begin with. <clears throat> Interesting. But to your vote, I mean, I'll vote with you, but I think. I think they've. I think we've made recommendations. I think the council knows where we stand. The I council, I agree. If I'm going to wait, um, I would agree with you. And I think they're to the point now. They're going to see our. I'm not against you. Then. No, they're going to see our recommendation. They're going to go. We've heard it before. Here it is again. And that's fine. And that's fine. But yeah. well, it was. A, I mean, it was a, a heavy uh, piece of conversation yeah. at the last city council meeting, and I suspect that it's you know. Um, you know, there's been some follow up that's been asked to figure out like there's certain aspects of it are taken scaled back or whatever, which, you know, I'll be anxious to hear what more of the work has to say on that piece. But that, so, yeah, I mean, there's more conversation obviously now that it's being had. So we're going to see know. that hopefully. I'm trying to get that wrapped up early morning tomorrow so Scott can share with council so you guys can all look at. My last comment is I want, I want to respond to Barry's comment about some of the dangers of the of traffic and, and fire engine sirens, etc. I want to say to you, if you've not spent an hour or two or three in the pit, maybe, um, you would have, if you had been there, you would have seen that six to eight to ten times a day, either fast Amtrak trains that, that pull suck air and, and huge echoes and suck air out of the pit. Go by and freight trains that rattle on and on and on. They're all within 10 or 20 feet of the edge of the park. Secondly, there's a huge color for this little crispy gorilla. Obviously, you can't have kids playing and dogs playing and color that thing, but it's, it's shipping a fair amount of fluid. It's a, it's a danger and, and, and will require excessive amount of re engineering. The third problem is that the pit kind of goes around a little hill. There are trees here and then it comes kind of up here. Which means that dogs and children in the park will not be visible to their own, may not be visible to the owner of the dog or the parent of the park. So, and there, as you know, I had a one page that was out years ago about the safety areas, the safety must have the desir desirability of the pit. So, it's not that we don't have, I mean, we don't have a good choice left. We don't have enough land to have a really good choice to make here. But I don't want it to go without mentioning that the pit itself has some pretty significant um, downsides from the point of view of dogs and kids. Can there be some excavation work? Is it possible? Can you excavate the trees or the hill? Down there, down there. Down there. You can it's you below the hill. hill. You've got parking that's down below. If I'm talking about the hill that's around the edge, the backside of the trail, the train side mm -hmm. of the park. I mean, very good. I mean, we can do anything, but it's that's not direction that city yeah. staff was exactly. expecting to go. So. And I understand, I hear what you're saying. That should all be vetted and that should all come out. And a proposal that says, you know, why or why not, this is a good location, it's never formally been done by this council. So. 10 years ten years ago or not? It wasn't done back. 
when you guys initially decided to make sure it's not the And then those are all consistent. I don't, I don't, I don't, we don't need to read the date. We, we know that some of us are okay. So, hey. well, then shall we both? Yeah. I think, well, I, I really think it's going to, by you turning in your, your uh, signatures tomorrow and the open form the 28th, which we should all be there, I think it'll kind of work itself out. Or at least, if nothing else, what we want is people to know. And yeah. if, if it gets built, hey, we did our part. That's all we can do. Yeah. 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 That's all we can do. Okay. Yeah. 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 Okay, so discussion more done. Okay. I so we might want to say it could be another recommendation that we just say that we'd like to have two smaller dog parks located somewhere in the city, one on the north side, one on the south side. There's been a lot of interest. Well, wait, why it's way on the far edge of town. I made a Wall Street Park would be the same. I made a I made a recommendation before. Leave that location as it is for a, a not a fenced in dog park, but as an open run dog park like they're using it now. Same with and Malala State Park. Same with Malala State Park, and put a dog park down at the Honda Fist, the fenced in area. Now you've got two dog parks, one on each end of the city. I said that so. Discussion more? No. All right. So we've had a motion. We've had a motion to move that the Candy Parks and Recreation Advisory Board recommend to City Council and Parks Recreation Advisory Board opposes the location of the proposed dog park at Territorial Road, Redwood Street, and the service access road for unsuitable location, including failure to meet the National Park's dog park sighting guidelines, and instead request that the other suggested locations, including the Honda Pits and Malala River State Park, be thoroughly analyzed for suitability and affordability. Okay, vote. Mark. Uh, okay. Yes. Okay. Ryan. Yes. Opposed. Yeah. Yes. yes. Very yes. Lisa? Yes. David? Oh, yes. <laughs> sorry, Terry. <laughs> David, you were yes. and Terry. Yes. So seven one. A question about the open house. Is it going to be zoned uh, or paralyzed? I'm going to be an open house. <laughs> I can't answer that. I haven't. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> do, you know if, uh, yeah. do you know if that is televised? Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I, I would assume so, but I like to double check. Okay. I can, I can, yeah. I'll, I have a meeting tomorrow morning with uh, Mr. Archer, so I can ask him too. Zoom would be okay if you. Zoom. Zoom is a. It's sort of an easier way for me <clears throat> for those of us who are out of town to tune in at that time. Okay, it's being held in council chambers, so I don't know why it could be done. Could so, be done. And then those who speak will come to the, the speaker's desk. Yeah, I'm not, I, I think they're presenting at this point. It's going to be, I think, uh, I think the direction was to try to bring you know two or three renditions of the dog park and what it would look like. Um, to get you know community input on you know on the look and yes we'll say we we'll use the word amenities um, for the park I think is kind of the, the crux of the open house I don't know if there's going to necessarily be dedicated you know speakers necessarily well but any of that is and is it possible to have some access to the part of the master plan our newly approved master plan which gives very high priority to Doug Park. Well, I, well I, I can, I mean, the park master plan is available online. So that can be, you know, I can ask staff if we can put off well, just, a couple of copies. Just acknowledge the, the fact that the master plan has established a high priority for Doug Park. Did you get a master plan full? Yeah. Like this? Yeah. 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 
mean, no matter where we build this thing, they're going to, if these people drive 40 miles from Pickleball, for God's sake, they'll come for a dog. Good Lord. Pickleball. Speaking of which, since the boat has been taken, I do have a philosophical suggestion. On, on behalf of the city of Pandy, I would like to say, I think what we heard today about the uh, about the interesting non-reservation scheduled place on the map, et cetera, I would very much like to have, have a situation in which we can have our pickle ports, pickle ports built, have our citizens get to use it to get it, become a good thing for the citizens of the city of Pandy, and at least in the first year, not allow uh, different organizations to be sending their troops in. I want our, our, our city people to have first first shot at ports for the first year or so, instead of opening it up to a variety of other districts like in Portland and South. I agree that the complaints that I got is that Canby people would go there to play, and the people that were playing said, we have reservations. Well, obviously now they can't. So now that we know that, um, but oh, you're going to have the bad eggs say, no, we, we had a reserve. This is, this is not about, about the reserve, reserve problems, et cetera. This is about, it'll take a while for Canby to get warmed up a lot and begin to have a good, a good demand for these courts. I want this first and foremost to be city court, courts for city of Canby people. And I would hate to have, have it overwhelmed <laughs> by everybody outside of the country to Canby. We are such a little town. Mm -hmm. and a beautiful place. I've driven by there numerous times. Those cars. No, it'll it'll take two years, probably at least one year, if not two, to get it going. Oh. All right. Can I get a motion to adjourn tonight's meeting? Something very. I just have a question for the mayor. And is there anything going on with negotiations for the pool anymore? between the city and the school district? Or is that um, just um, No, I, all I can say right now is teach Because I don't know if you guys are aware, I know Gary is, but the main water pipe going into <laughs> the pool broke and they had to fix it. I didn't this, is, that, this is just the start of what's going to happen. Public works was on it, they wouldn't let me help. I miss working with you on the pool. Day. It wasn't me. <laughs> it wasn't me. <laughs> I know. Oh, thank God, it's not my problem anymore. <laughs> But this is fresh water going in. I can't imagine what's happening to the pipes under the pool. They're bad. That was all going to be taken care of with that money that the council decided not to do. So I think they should be made aware of it. I, and I don't know. That's, yeah, Does all, Scott Archer know about it? All the P traps, everything is rotted out from the chlorine and jerk off. Yeah, we've we <laughs> dealt with it for years and years. So, but you know, we, we are very much aware and all I can say due to um, executive session requirements is stay right. tuned. That's okay. all I can say. We like that. Right. It's going to fail. It's going to fail for a long time. That's just okay. Okay. There are, we had a um, deadline of yesterday for names to, to be replaced to Davis. We have two. We have Kara Hawkins and we have. Uh, like you can change Oh, her husband. Um, Eric Jarosh. Eric Jarosh. Two. And, and I've asked one spot. One spot. I've asked Maya to set up an interview time for Mr. Hudson, myself, and Ryan Fox. And so hopefully we'll. Have a replacement before our next meeting, which is we will not. We will not. No. Okay. We won't. But uh, November. Are you November. saying there's meeting short? Are you saying no? I understand that. <laughs> uh, that's a rarity. It is. October the 18th is our next meeting. So oh. you're sure. When was it? You need to come to the packet. <laughs> I mean, yes, but no, no, no. <laughs> not to talk to All right, Barbara, I tried. I did not know the deadline was yesterday. I do know that the length of time between the time Jim Davis submitted his resignation and the time this committee was notified of that submission was 18 days. But if, when, in which period of time other candidates could be sought out, I want to understand 
why it is and why why it's too late for any more nominations. I put in to I mean from the time Jim Davis resigned, which was the day after one of the council meetings. I can't remember, but it's been you were voluntary in that council. It's been almost a month. What's that? It's been almost a month. It was, yeah. I, I counted the days between the day of his resignation and the date that, I, that you distributed the memo to this committee. Okay. And it was 18 days. All of which I would have used to go out for looking for. for you couldn't find one in 18 days. What? You didn't find one in 18 days. No, I didn't think it was limited to 18 days. We didn't know for 18 days. I didn't know that there was even an opening. I didn't start searching then. I assumed that it was not going to happen at this meeting. Or that it well, we're not naming it at this meeting. No. You've already shut down the nomination before this committee has a chance to deliberate. Does anybody else think that that there might have been time for all of us to think about the council said in one of their meetings? Was that an inline staff the meeting? I didn't know. The council doesn't say that. That's usually locked up to the the board to decide yeah. or the board chairs to when, decide. When the deadline is generally it's been we generally I'm shocked we was no we invitation immediately upon a lot of our board committees stay open because Why they don't get that that day? the day that he resigned we, we weren't in session. No, I'm there. talking about advise this committee about the resignation and the open I did and I sent an email out to the entire board. Did you not get the email? Well, it's possible I didn't read it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure you well, that's I'm totally honest. Really on this. <laughs> I, don't know how, I don't know how to read very well. Okay. But I do not recall seeing any notification to the members of the school. But if that is a mistake, then I apologize for my comment. I would have been all over the attempt to sort of reach out for some new blood and people that are not now, who are very park interested. And very potential applicants. I think I the applicants that we have are part of the direction. Yeah, if you send it out, I apologize. Okay. I didn't. Anybody else? I got a receipt. Oh, here. I stepped right into that one. <laughs> Thanks for being so honest, Barbara. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Any other comments? Well, motion to adjourn. Anything else? Motion to adjourn. Mark Trueblaster. Uh, Second by Seth Seth. <laughs> Um, thank you at our next Jerry. meeting, our next meeting, so October 18th at 6.30 right here. That's up, we can pull down generator. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. Kids like, yeah, like, I'm going to do that. Yeah, tomorrow's good. What's going on, Mr. Mayor? I have a side question I need to ask you at this. Um, Let me stop your desk as well. Since the party's over, tonight is over.